Hey guys, here we are in downtown San Diego, Gaslamp District, and today we're shooting a little vlog action of us going out and getting some content. We're gonna show you what we typically do and also give you guys a few pointers on what you can do to improve your photography as well. We're doing a joint shoot with the Miles team. They do electric skateboards, so I'm just gonna show you around real quick. We're getting set up now. One quick side note before we get started. We do wanna see your guys' photos. We want you to submit them to us on Instagram, Facebook, whatever you want. Uh, we'd love to feature you guys, and we're looking forward to doing some content creation contests in the future for some prizes and cool stuff. Yeah, you don't wanna be awkward. A little bit of music on there, it'll be just fine. <laughs> the most impactful thing you can do to get great looking bike photos is to photograph it from the correct angle. Now what most people do by default is hold the camera eye level because that's what you're used to. I have my subject Dylan here and they just go ahead and snap a picture like this. What you really want to do to improve these photos is change the angle. I'll explain briefly why this is important in a second. But what I want to do is take the camera and actually put it level with where the, where the axle of the bike is. So we're shooting more from the bottom up. Now I'm gonna take that very same photo from down here, and then we're gonna compare it to the original. The second way to get impactful bike photos is to choose an appropriate background. Now this means two things. First of all, you want something that's pretty neutral, not very complex, not a lot of designs and drawings. A big red door is perfect. The second thing is you want the color of that background to be in high contrast with your bike. So black on red is a great contrast. I'm gonna go ahead and put the bike here, take out my cell phone, and snap a few shots now. And that's a wrap, guys. We're loading everything up now. I uh, can't wait to get in and see what these photos look like and show them with you. If there's one piece of advice that I want you guys to take home, it's get out there and have fun. You're not gonna get better at shooting photos by watching a tutorial video. You actually have to get out behind the screen, you have to practice setting up the bike, and most importantly, you have to learn from your mistakes. So we're gonna go back to the shop, throw all these photos onto the computer, see how we did. All right guys, Dylan here from FLX. Just got back outside shooting with Ben and the gang. We are going to go over some of the photographs. Thank you so much for making it this far. I know this content isn't for everyone, but we are big creatives here at the office, so we do love sharing this stuff with you guys. Anyway, to jump right into it, Ben was mentioning before about taking the angle into perspective when you are taking a photo of your bike. Now, if you look at this photo, not bad at all, the initial subject where your eyes first come in contact when you look at this photo is going to be the person riding the bike. If you want to emphasize the bike, the real look of this bike and how unique it is in its style and how beautiful it is, a better tactic is to shoot from the axle level of the bike highlighted right there. As you could see in this photo, for example, the bike becomes a much more prominent part of the photograph. This works even better for photos where it's just the bike by itself. Now, there's not a lot going on with just a bike by itself. If you shoot it from this angle, it does become a big part of the photograph and is much better looking. And as you can see here, this is where we shot at the firehouse door, which was our second tip, which is to find a background that complements the bike. We are using the 
black baby maker pro so we needed something with color to really make this photo pop and catch the viewer's eye now if we were to have a different colored bike we would do something else here's a couple examples and last but not least just a quick example of a bad background i know this is a little bit exaggerated and outlandish obviously we went for the worst case scenario but as you can see there the bike just does not pop out of here so we would not use a photo like this anyway guys that's all thank you so much for watching let us know if you want to see a part two about post-processing and we cannot wait for you guys to be out there and riding and getting creative with your bike photos we'd love to feature you guys in one of our social platforms as well as potentially in the future holding some sort of content contest anyway guys that's all for now catch you next time